Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating rectangular shapes that have wiggly edges around them and thank you very much to the YouTube viewer who asked for this video. So I'm going to start with a rectangle. I'm just going to draw out a rectangle. I am going to increase the stroke on this and I'm going to make a duplicate of it by just holding down the Alt or Option key as I drag a duplicate away because we're going to do this a couple of ways. So firstly, adding the wiggly lines around this shape. We're going to effect and then distort and transform and zigzag. This is the quickest way to do it but there are some gotchas with this tool. You'll notice that it doesn't look very even and it's also not rounded. Well we can solve the rounded problem here by just choosing smooth but the evenness is a function of the ridges per segment which is really quite interesting because if we use an odd value for ridges per segment we get nice even bumps around our shape but if we use an even number things just are awful. So you're going to use an odd number here and if you don't want your ridges to be so tall then you can just decrease the size. But you will notice that we've got lots of bumps here and only a few bumps down here. So we're going to have a look at that in a minute. Let's just click OK. Now I want to show you something with this. I'm going to just drag a duplicate of this particular shape out of the way. So with this shape here, when we go to the appearance panel, you'll see that we've got a path that has a zigzag on it. So this is not baked into the shape. If we want to bake it into the shape, we're going to select the shape and choose object and then expand appearance. But if I have a look in my layers palette, you might see that there's something we didn't expect to have happened here. What's happened is we've ended up with a compound path. So this shape here is no longer a path. It's actually a filled shape. And then there's a shape in the middle which is the fill. But this is a compound path. You can see here that it is a filled shape. Now if you want your path to remain a path, actually with editable points along it that you could for example increase or decrease your stroke then you're going to need to do something different and this is the problem with this. I've done a video on it before in terms of where your stroke is placed can have a different effect on expand appearance. So let's have a look at the stroke panel here and you'll see that for these two shapes the stroke was on the inside. Well I'm going to shift it to the middle. So on this shape here the stroke is on the middle. Now when I go to object expand and appearance, we're going to end up with a very different result. So here is the shape here. Let's just open up this panel and in this case we have got a path. You can see it's a stroked path. So these two shapes, they're exactly the same shape except for the positioning of the stroke. When we run expand appearance on them, the result is different. This gives us a filled shape around the edge. This gives us a path. So just heads up there, you'll want to make sure that your stroke is in the correct position for whatever it is that you want to do. Now I'm going to go and grab this one. I am going to move my stroke on this one because I want to end up with a path. Now the problem here was we got lots of little bumps and not very many bumps. So let's see how we're going to solve that. With the shape selected, I'm going to choose Object, Path, Add Anchor Points. Now it looks like nothing has happened except that we've just got the shape has been expanded. That's not true, but let's go and do it again. Object, Path, Add Anchor Points. And again, still looks like nothing has happened. Do not be fooled into thinking that nothing has happened because something has happened. Let's go to the Direct Selection tool and now you'll see that this shape has lots of anchor points around it. Typically it would only have anchor points in the corner. So let's just prove that any regular rectangle when we select it has only got anchor points in the corner. This one now has anchor points all around it and it's these anchor points that are going to control these bumps. So we're still in the same position though because we've got lots of more anchor points at the top and bottom than we have down the side. Well I'm going to the delete anchor point tool and I'm just going to click on these two and these two. So now around our rectangle we've got more like a segment here, a segment here, a sort of almost the same size segment here, 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 here. So this time the effect is going to work just perfectly. Well, reasonably perfectly. Effect, distort and transform, zigzag. Same issue as before. We're going to make it smooth. We're going to increase or decrease the size according to whether you want flat or bumpy bumps. And 
This time we're getting a more balanced look because we've got more anchor points so it doesn't really matter this time whether we have a positive or a negative value for ridges per segment and we're just going to look for something that looks reasonably even all the way around. But just remembering that a segment is something between the anchor points and so you want to have anchor points around your shape you want to have enough of them to get the bump that you want but you also want them to be roughly the same size and in some cases that might involve going to the delete anchor point tool and just removing the ones that you don't want and I click OK again we've got a path that has a zigzag applied to it if we want to expand that we're making sure that our stroke is on the center of the shape which we already did object expand appearance now if we go to the LAS panel open up this group we end up with this path and you can see it's a stroked path and then we've got the middle bit which is the fill in the middle so we we'll just change that if we want to but this is a path with a stroke around it so that's how you get shapes with wiggly lines in Adobe Illustrator and thank you again to the viewer who asked the question because I think it's an awesome question and the answer is interesting and also has buried in it some techniques in Illustrator that you may not have thought of and some issues with expand appearance that you may not have known about. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.